this is such a cool thing. Thank you so much to FLIR for sending me this for review. This is the FLIR One Pro. It's an infrared camera that connects into your smartphone. So let's get it unboxed. I was expecting quite utilitarian packaging, but actually this is a really nice unboxing experience. They've put this together really nicely, even a box with magnets. Inside it you get a case and the camera and a USB-C lead. You do need to charge this up, but it then connects directly to your smartphone. I'm going to be reviewing this for an education purpose, so would you buy this as a physics teacher? And I have to say thank you because they sent me this in exchange for this review. So just full disclosure, I'm going to give my own honest opinions. They haven't paid me to do this, they haven't told me what I need to say, but they did send me this in exchange for this review. It's very easy to connect this with the camera, simply turn it on, push it in, and the phone recognises and immediately launches the app. Calibrates itself, and you can see now we're in infrared mode. This is the USB-C version, but they also have micro USB and they also have iPhone connectors. So why did I go for this one, which is the smartphone variety, rather than one of the other FLIR cameras which have screens built in? Well, I really wanted this so that you can then record your photos, videos, and time lapses directly onto the smartphone. You could even broadcast this by using screen share or anything like that from the smartphone. So I think it just integrates very, very well with what I have and that I use the smartphone very much as part of my video making process. And I'm gonna try sharing this directly to the screen at the front of my classroom so all the kids can see what's coming out of this infrared camera. Well, let's give it a go. So this is the FLIR in time-lapse mode. I just fancy a cup of tea. There's so much physics that you can see demonstrated in this clip. You can actually see the power cord getting hotter as it's supplying all that current to the kettle. And of course the base is getting hot and you can see the water in the kettle is getting hot. But I really like the fact that the matte black plastic outlines are actually giving off way more infrared than the light and shiny materials around it. A hot drink is going to dissipate its heat to the surroundings. So you can see this tea is hot and much hotter than the surroundings. So it is radiating heat by infrared to the surroundings. Also, there'll be transfer of heat by particles, which will be convection from the top of the cup and also conduction through the cup itself as well. You can also use the FLIR to actually measure the temperature of a spot or of a square or of a circle of the image. And you can see this tea is 76 degrees Celsius. Remember, you want water as hot as possible to get all those good flavors out of the tea. And you should leave your tea for a good four minutes to brew. It's great that the heat on the surface is still visible after you remove the tea. And if you ever need any evidence that heat dissipates the surroundings, well, there you go. One other thing I find fascinating is the reflections you get with IR off the mirror. So as you can see, the mirror also reflects infrared light. This is so cool. <laughs> I mean, it's pretty cool that you can see birds and other animals in the hedgerow because the difference between their body heat and the actual temperature of the surroundings is so large. And I guess the kind of classic use of this will be for analyzing buildings. So you can see if I was to want to improve this house in terms of its thermal properties, I think I'd be looking at replacing that door. Now we'll say this camera is designed to detect the surface radiation, so don't expect it to be like the movies where the thermal imaging camera can see through buildings and see people on the other side of walls, but it's actually gonna detect infrared emitted from the surfaces of whatever you're pointing at. So for home improvements, you might be looking at, well, which are the areas of the building should I improve to make it a better insulated house? But for us in curriculum and how we would actually use this, there's lots of other uses that you can use this for. 
it's actually a really cold day today but the sun's been out all day and actually a lot of the surfaces the surfaces of my walls for example have been heated up by the sun throughout the day and so now they're re-emitting that heat as infrared so yeah this is a really impressive thing I mean there's lots of uses that you can use this in the classroom for there's lots of ways you can use this in the classroom to enhance your teaching. I'm sure you can think of more, so this list isn't exhaustive. But the areas of physics you might teach this might be thermal physics, you know, emission of infrared or heating by radiation, the electromagnetic spectrum, insulation, energy transfers and efficiency, specific heat capacity, specific latent heat, black body spectrums in A-level, or even the heat and effect of current would be a really interesting use of this thing. I also really like the fact that because it's a USB-C, you can have it either way around. Either you filming it or indeed selfie mode. <laughs> That's selfie mode. <laughs> this is a really cool thing. <laughs> this is very cool. Thank you very much to FLIR for sending me this for review. You may have noticed that there's actually two cameras on here. One is the IR sensor and the other is just a standard image sensor. And that can give you a kind of composite mode whereby you can actually see an outline of what you'd see in real life. So you can use that to match up the areas which are hotter and cooler with what you see in real life. It gives you a sort of wireframe mode. As I hope you've been able to see, this is really, really easy to use. It's pretty much plug and play. And look, it's a whole lot of fun and it should make your lessons on heat a bit more engaging. I think I'd recommend it to any science department. <laughs>